All right, so the next video, um, this video is about sampling, selection bias, uh, types of sampling, random samples, um, and questionnaire design. Um, so let's look at sampling, random samples, and selection bias. A random sample helps alleviate what we call selection bias, and I'm going to get into in depth what selection bias really is. Um, random samples are extremely difficult to get, but they are the most important. Um, but other types of sampling are systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and convenience sampling. You can read what those are in your book. Um, you can also read them on the PowerPoint. Um, they're very clear about what they are. I'm not going to waste my time on it uh, talking because, you know, as you can see, I only have five minutes. And that can take up a good two, three minutes of this video. So just make sure you read it um, and understand the differences. So I really want to talk about selection bias and I really want to talk about questionnaire design. This is really what is very, very, very important when it comes to a statistical study. Um, I'm going to warn you the following questions deal with hot button topics. But when you are running a statistical study, it's really important to be able to remain neutral. Um, not everything studied is puppy dogs and kittens. It's, it's real life stuff. It's religion. It's abortion. It's racism. It's, it, it's all of that unhappy, ugly stuff in life that we have to deal with. And now know that I don't care where you stand. You're entitled to your opinion. Um, the next questions are about inflammatory issues. Um, the, the intention is not to incite debate or argue anything. Um, we're all entitled to our own opinions and we're all adults. It's important to remain neutral when you are analyzing things like this. So that is why I'm going to use some hot button issues. Um, also, I want you to keep in mind the statement, there are three types of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Um, keep this mentality in the next few pages, please. All right, so here are two examples of the same question. Do you believe that it should be legal for a doctor to use his or her own medical judgment to perform a surgical procedure a patient has asked the doctor to perform? Or do you believe that it should be legal to kill a baby? The previous two questions are the same question asked in a different way. Why are both of these biased? I want you to pause this video and take a second to ask yourself why these questions are biased. Again, I'm not asking you if you believe these or what your answers are to these questions because that will vary from person to person. I want you to tell me why both of these questions are horribly, horribly biased. All right, next question. Should the actions of people who are acting under their church and religious beliefs be excused? Or should the actions of the Westboro Baptist Church be allowed? And if you don't understand who, know who the Westboro Baptist Church is, there is an explanation right here. Again, these two questions are the same. And the whole point of this is that the power of words can lend integrity or completely destroy your study. You absolutely, absolutely have to be careful. And there are ways to avoid this when you are forming a study. Using simple and clear language. None of those questions I just asked you if were simple or clear. Uh, when reporting the results, include the actual questions asked so people can critically analyze your, your study. Avoid leading questions. Avoid asking two questions in one. Don't be vague. Be clear. See question one. Okay? So that's the selection bias. Um, it's everywhere. Um, you can even do selection bias by picking your sample wrong. You have to be very, very meticulous and very careful when you are designing your study and who you are studying or whom you are studying or what you are studying. It is very, very, very important. And that is the end of the video. Well, not the end. You still have experimental versus observational. But that's the end of this video.